that's my pen. I need it. Yeah. Yep. We're gonna wait for India to join. If you're watching right now. Go inside. Daddy's gonna put something on. something. Hold on one second. Mom! Yes. How do I get on the video? Hold on, I'm just going to reply. Go to my Facebook. Where are you? Sorry, hang on one second. Hello over here, that's cute. Thank you. I'm wanted to just leave it curly this morning because I straighten it every day like religiously or blow dry it straight. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't like, know that. I thought your hair was... Okay, I thought it was naturally straight, so it was curly. Okay. I hide all my all my truths, so I'm doing a little exposure therapy and seeing if I can practice some, some of what I preach and this love yourself stuff, so I'm letting it be natural to me. Got it. And I didn't put makeup on. So. I got it. Except for my eyebrows. I have to draw them on, so. <laughs> That's okay. It's cute. So I think we're on. All right. No complications. No sound problems. No complications. I know. Normally we have a little bit of a struggle trying to get this started, but today, ooh, thank God. Yeah. So tonight we are talking about um, skin regimens um, and how you're treated after uh, weight loss surgery, correct? Yes. Um, specifically, All right. how we're dealing with um, taking care of skin that's been through a lot, losing a hundred plus pounds. Um, yeah. So we yeah. definitely need to take care of our skin after weight loss surgery and before okay. preventatively. Definitely before. I know one of the things that I, um, I was concerned with was <clears throat> sagging skin. Cause you remember I told you, you know, my starting weight, I was pretty heavy. Uh, much heavier than I am right now. And I was concerned, um, you know, I know what the doctors told me, but I didn't know what it looked like to lose a hundred pounds, you know, for, for me personally. Um, so I just, you know, cocoa butter, um, <clears throat> cause I did have some, some skin that started to kind of get that. Um, I don't know if it's like crepe paper crepe because paper, of the weight yeah. that was lost. It was like, crepe. yeah, it was kind of like crepe paper. And the cocoa butter really helped a lot. Um, that and coconut oil helped a lot for me not to, you know, for my skin to kind of get it, its elasticity back. Um, and that's pretty much it. You know, I tried to make sure it was as uh, lubricated as much as possible to make sure that I was, I mean, I was kind of lathering in, <laughs> uh, for, at one point, coconut oil from head to toe. I used it quite a bit, but it was mostly coconut, but cocoa butter. Um, to try to deal with, because I thought that I would be able to get rid of the scars from the surgery that I wasn't able to get rid of, but I did kind of get rid of the crepe paper issue, <laughs> um, kind of, I guess, sagging a little bit um, in my skin. Now, since it's been a few years, it's filled, it's filled out, you know, it's, it's kind of, you know, distributed itself pretty well. So I'll have a little bit of sagging here and there, but not much, because um, I still, like I said, I still have about 75 pounds to lose. So I guess we'll see. I have to pick my regimen back up uh, with the cocoa butter and um, coconut oil mixed together. I have to pick that regimen back up once I get <laughs> get through the 75 pounds. So what did you do? Because your weight loss was way more drastic than mine. What was your regimen? So when when we talk about skin, the things that we want to maintain in our skin are collagen and S, uh, elastin. Um, Right. Those, those are what you want to take care of. So you want to create blood flow in your skin um, and throughout your hypodermis, your dermis, and your epidermis, which are the three layers, so that you can shed off your old skin and that sort of crepe paper feeling skin and develop new skin underneath uh, that has, you know, the elasticity mm -hmm. that you want. So I did all, I had that crepe paper feeling and it was especially on my arms. 
Um, so now yeah. what's interesting is papayas actually have an enzyme in them that is for skin tightening and it specifically helps for your cheeks to keep the skin tight and for your arms to keep the skin tight. And I didn't know that until my research, but papaya enzymes are good for that. So I had you know, that skin. I think I extract for a second for my face, but I didn't stick to it, but that's good to know. Yeah, it's, I, I thought that was neat because I love papaya and it's because it has so much vitamin A in it. Um, mm -hmm. So I will definitely, I, you know, I work from the inside out. So I eat the things that have uh, good stuff in it for your skin, like things rich in vitamin C, oranges, um, red peppers, kiwi, strawberries, uh, grapefruit, not a lot of people like, but it has a ton of vitamin C and that's amazing for your skin. Yeah. Um, and on the outside, I actually have some of the products I use. I want to show you guys. Um, I have very sensitive skin. I have psoriasis um, mm -hmm. as well. So it's, it's, not, okay. it's not just a skin thing. It's an autoimmune thing. But part of it is that my skin is very sensitive right. and I get rashes. So this is my all over lotion. Okay, I've seen that before. So this, um, this basically, I mean, it says it's, it's approved by the National Eczema Association. There's nothing that says it's for psoriasis, but it basically has nothing in it but what I want. Um, and that's what I try with okay. any product to get as close to, you know, just the bare minimum ingredients you need. So not a lot of preservatives and stuff like that. So as a result, it doesn't smell very right. good. But um, I also use this out of Africa, makes a bomb that I use. Okay. Um, and that I, you can get at Walmart and stuff like that. For my face and for my neck, I use um, this, Neutrogena, and it has hyaluronic acid in it, which plumps up the cells in your, it puts water in the cells in your, in your face. So, nice. um, and then I, nice. I use this on like my stomach and any area like that, that had that crepe paper um, is just coconut mm -hmm. oil. Um, and a lot of people, um, where do they, you know, specific areas that we're worried about after weight loss is having that apron. A lot of women um, worry about also, because I had a very, my face was, you know, very, very round. You saw my pictures. So um, yeah, uh, in here started to get loose. And I was like, oh no, because I don't want, I'm only 30. I don't want, you know, this part of my neck to, um, you know, to get like a turkey neck. And I hate that term because it's so derogative because women mm. that have it, it, sometimes it's genetic, you can't control it and they're still beautiful. But yeah. I wanted to avoid yeah. it if I could. Um, so I yeah, actually I got that. into facial yoga. Um, Danielle Collins mm. has a whole thing about different facial yoga um, and different positions that you can make that strengthen uh, certain muscles in your face that will you know, hold your, a lot of people say like that my eyelids look higher now after surgery that, you know, how did you get more eyelid? And it's, it's interesting because I look at my pictures and it did sort of was lower down. I didn't do anything like, you know, with my face. It just looks different now uh, because I do a lot of this. Facial oh, okay. yoga. <laughs> so, and okay, I really, so, I really so what, so what type of, what type of exercises, like, what do you do with facial, facial yoga? Because I've never heard of that before. And I've heard several different types of yoga, but I've never, ever heard of facial yoga. So what, can you give an example or show an example of something that you do? Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's like a full body thing or if you just kind of move your face. Uh, let me, let's see, what, what do you do? It's just your face. So uh, one of the first ones is you can do a mouth um, O shape and it's going to strengthen all in here. Um, but you just, Oh, okay. Okay. And holding it. Um, you okay. can do the giraffe, which is just putting your neck backwards and straining these muscles and you'll feel it immediately. Okay. Wait, why did I, why did I immediately start putting my I'm sorry. I'm like, okay. Um, <laughs> I said, oh my God. I'm like, and okay. And then being, being All right. surprised. So you hold your cheeks right here. And then um, this is supposed to strengthen okay. these muscles that keep up your eyebrows. Okay. I can't hold both of them because one of them is holding the phone. So what am I supposed to do? You're supposed to <laughs> Why hold I... this muscle down <laughs> and literally just look surprised like that. And that's uh, <laughs> like, like that. You can also. <laughs> okay, let me do my surprise look first. And then I'll put the hold the muscle down. Say... Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, got and it. And you can. Uh, well, I guess if you hold that, how long are you supposed to hold it? So I just, I do everything in like a 20 count 
There was, no, I just did what was comfortable oh, for okay. me. Um, don't, gotcha. you know, don't go crazy the first day because they are muscles and it will get sore, especially your neck. The first time I did it, I was yeah. sore as hell the next day. So um, make sure not okay. to overdo it. But, um, and then there's different ways that you can take care of this skin. Uh, that's gonna, you're gonna lose a lot of weight in this area. So there are facial rollers. Um, that you can yeah. activate the skin. They sell them at CVS for like nine bucks. You can get it and um, roll over your skin. And you just want, you want- The fascia black, the right? Yes, well, there's that too. I found that product, the fascia blaster. I thought that was amazing. So yeah. um, if anyone wants to look that up, we have no affiliation with it, but it was just a really cool product, um, the fascia blaster. And you can sort of work out- um, you know, some of that, like we were talking about, people use it for scar tissue and um, stretch mm -hmm. marks was the word I was trying to think of. And speed lights. Like that. Yeah. Okay. But uh, okay. that was, that's a cool product. Um, and Epsom salt baths, Epsom salt tightens your skin, which oh, those are I, the best. I don't know if it's just an Italian person thing, but my mom soaked us in Epsom salt and oatmeal for everything. No, no. no. <laughs> My mom didn't soak us in Epsom salt oatmeal, but she did when we got a little bit older. You know, she she told us about it as a relaxation treatment. Um, so let me tell you, a, a little, when I would, oh my God, an Epsom salt bath, and I had a bath, a tub with, with jets. Let me explain to you who woke up in the tub three hours later. Right here, this girl, this one right here, because it's so relaxing. Like I would keep like putting hot water in there just to keep the water warm, and then the jets are running, and oh my God, it's the best thing. You feel so I was very relaxed when I got out of it. Of course, I was relaxed because I'm asleep in the, in the bathtub. Yeah. But when I got out, I was very relaxed. I had a really good night's sleep. And then I felt really energized in the morning. Oh, my God. When I had, like, a hard day out at work or something like that, those are the truth. Seriously. Like, if you, like, I used, uh, I think it's Dr. Teal Epsom salt. Yeah. I love those. <laughs> Uh oh, she froze. Are you back? Okay, now I can see you. I'm frozen. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. I was am I, I was talking about being um well, I don't even know where I left off at, where I was where I stopped. Epsom salts are baths are the truth. I love them. I absolutely love them. Yeah. Most are the last thing that I could possibly think to do. Yeah. They're awesome. I don't know if it's your if you your Wi Fi or mine. Maybe we're good right now because I can see you. Okay. You kept frozen freezing on me. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Oops, maybe she... I have no... Oh, okay. Maybe she's going to rejoin. We're going to see. How could I play catch outside with you right now in the middle of what I'm doing? Okay, I, then ask him. I'm doing something. And what I'm doing is less important than that? Okay. Let's see if she can join back up. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna go play baseball. Okay, here we go. I'm trying to add her back right now. Can you please just back away from what I'm doing? Okay. I have sound. I have sound again. Okay. I'm back in, I'm back in the land of the living. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, okay. Now, what were you talking about before I was so disrespectfully frozen? <laughs> um, what were we saying? Oh, just that Epsom salt bath. The Epsom salt bath. bath. Yeah, those are really good yeah. for tightening your skin as well. Um. And then the, the next important thing we wanted to talk about, aside from skin, because that is um, so important to, to take care of, and we'll list some of the regime below, we want to talk about tonight 
um, attention after weight loss surgery, positive and negative, who it's coming from and how to deal with it. Yeah. Um, Cause it's yeah. a big part of surgery is that ultimately you're changing inside and out. Um, and people are going to react all different ways to it. So yes, they are. Um, positive attention. I guess we'll start with the, the good thing first, positive attention. Is it a good thing? Uh, you know, do you like it? Do you, I don't, I'm a person that I don't like attention. So um, afterwards it was very awkward when I started getting attention from, you know, from the opposite yeah. sex. Um, Please don't knock that over. Yeah. Sorry. They need the ball to go play catch. And it's in the bag I'm using to balance. Of course. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't like, um, I didn't so like that I... attention because I thought it was very fake. So that's what it seemed like to me. If you didn't like me before and my character or personality and I had nothing to offer you in friendship, what now, um, you know, a smaller version of me, how, you know, in what way is that going to be different? So that's, that was my thinking on it. It was, it just wasn't very. So these are people that you, these are people that you knew? Yeah. Okay. All right. I got you. Oops, sorry. Um, okay. I got you. Yeah. In the modern um, age, we can. I don't think, I didn't. We can connect with people from, you know, from all over and all throughout our past. So that's what I meant. Like getting, mm -hmm. you know, comments on pictures. You look fantastic now. Gotcha. Like, um, you know, it was just, that's what I was referencing. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, I've always had, I guess, a, a decent amount of, um, of attention. Most of it, to be perfectly honest, if I was just 100% transparent, was unwanted. Um, because I'm the one that gets the, I get the guy that's like, what's up? Uh, nothing. <laughs> so, you know, I'm getting, you know, I'm, I'm usually getting the one that's just looking, you know, sitting there looking simple in a car and just, you know, and I, I think, I definitely got a lot more attention when I came down from being 430 pounds, definitely got a lot more attention. Um, and people who just like thicker women in general. Um, but I don't know that the, I won't say that it was very, it was very new for me. It was, uh, Amanda said her, her too. Yeah. I never understood that. Like, they're just like, or is I get the A. First of all, call me A again and see what I don't respond to stuff like that. I'm not doing that. Yeah. Um, and, and I don't date men or even respond to men that even are not that approach me that way. If you don't ask me, if you don't say hi or ask me what my name is or something like that, you can forget it. But anyway, um, I got some pretty good, I guess, attention after I came down. It wasn't too, too much different from what I got before, but I did get a lot of, to be perfectly honest, I had a lot of guys with with a very strange fetish before. Very weird. Very, very strange gentleman that had this, this fetish before, like, let me feed you donuts and put bat wings on you. That'll be a negative. We won't be doing that. <laughs> yeah, we won't be doing that. Um, now, I think, you know what I think that the the change has been is that my my level of confidence has changed. And I like I said in our last video, you know, this is, I think this is the first time in my life that I've actually felt uh, fully and completely just beautiful. I think that, um, you know, I like the way I look. I like the way that my body is, even though it's still a bigger body. You know, if you have to think about it, you know, I lost more than 100 pounds. To me, uh, that's a win. That's I still do need to lose the 75, but to me, that's a win. I like, yeah. right. I like, um, you know, what I was able to do after, you know, I could fit in boots and I could, you know, do different things that I couldn't do before. So uh, for me, I'm confident where I am right now. Um, but the attention that I got, you know, I pretty much, I don't, I'm not going to say that I had a lot of negative attention from like family or friends. They were very supportive of me. Um, everybody who knew was very supportive. I did get a couple, um, you know, a couple people that asked a lot of questions that I didn't want to answer. Like, how much do you weigh? At the time, I didn't want to answer that. Or what was your weight at the time? I didn't want to answer that. But for the most part, I had a pretty good community of people around me um, and they, they supported me. Um, and I didn't really get a lot of negative attention. I think um, for the most part, I had a pretty good positive experience after I had the surgery. That's good. That's good. A lot of people, unfortunately, what I've seen is that, that that's not their experience. Um, 
so many people, you know, yeah. in our group talk about things that even their family members say to them. So what do we do about, know. you know, negative family members or jealous family members, jealous coworkers? Um, I was thinking about this before. What, you know, what do we do? And I've sort of been putting together, you know, a program that we can use eventually um, in our group and, you know, in the people in our lives to sort of, you know, get them to ground zero, build them back up and make them bulletproof against this negative stuff from their family members. Because um, yeah. what you're doing with your family members is that you're succeeding in front of them and doing that in, in front of certain people is going to get a certain response. And if something in them wants what you have or what you're doing, whether you got promoted at work or you're having weight loss surgery, you're having a baby, you're those are the people that are, you know, when you announce your pregnancy, they say, you know, are you afraid of miscarrying? Do you, you know, like, oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know, and Ooh. do these people really want to hurt your feelings or are they hurting? You know, they're hurting. We know that. But the stuff that they say is still painful. Um, I would go off. I'm not even gonna lie. I would I clean house if it. Mm -mm, no, I, I would have to, I would literally have to clean house that would not fly with me. And I, and what you're saying is so spot on and so true because I was even talking to one of our members uh, the other day and she, uh, she had to actually create a, uh, a profile, a fake profile um, so that she could come on face, Facebook, fa a fake Facebook profile so that she could join our group um, so that she could talk about weight loss surgery because she cannot talk about it with her family and her friends, you know, her family, they're not supportive and, you know, they're, they're pretty catty and they, you know, start like to start stuff and they bicker and they, you know, it, uh, you know, how secrets pass and they, next thing you know, everybody knows, you know, your business and she's really trying to um, deal with this and get information and stuff. And I just thought, I felt so my heart went out to her because, you know, at first my, I was asking, I was like, well, why are you hiding it? Because like I said, I had a very different experience, but I have to understand that everybody does not have that. And I empathy to her. But I just do not understand how people, why do you treat people that way? I don't get that. And they need a place. And I'm so glad that we did this group because more and more every day I'm seeing comments from our members that they're saying that they need a place to vent. They need a place to talk about it. They need a place where they can feel safe because they're getting these attacks from their family members. They're getting attacks from their friends. One lady says she couldn't even tell her husband that she was getting a surgery. And I'm like, well, how are you going to do that? I don't get it. I don't know how you're going to do that. But they're dealing with this very real situation. You know, you're, you're faced with, do I fix my health or, you know, do I please this individual? And, you know, husband and wife situation is a little sticky because you can't really just say be a rebel and go ahead and do it. Now, if it's a boyfriend, that's different. You do what you're going to do. But husband is, is a different situation. So, you know, I just think I, I, my heart goes out to people who do not have a family or friend support system because that just... I just don't understand. I don't understand it, but I know that it's a very real situation. It is. And it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. So what do we do when we have those, um, those family groups and that don't support us is you don't have to throw away your entire family. You know, you, you need to create a new village. Um, and how do we make adults as, as yeah. friends? So, you know, that's that's sort of awkward. Are you just going to start walking up to people at the grocery store? Hey, you're buying, you know, gluten-free bread. Can I, you know, talk to you about, about you know, want to be friends, want to hang out because we have that in common? Like, how do you do that? How do you, you're going to find those, <laughs> you're going to find those people in your life. They'll present themselves, you know, in certain situations. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even the way that you and I met, yeah. you know, we'll give a little, a little backstory, but um, you met me in yeah. at, at our training for our job and one of um, a job that we, yeah. we previous, you know, we actually both left. Um, so now that's why we're focusing on ne this. Neither of us lasted yeah. <laughs> two months. Yeah. We didn't us lasted two months, which is hilarious. Yeah. But during training, my, um, yeah. my dad <laughs> went into the ICU and was put on life support. Now I had no one yeah. in that training, yeah. Yeah. but you to be like, Hey, I just met you, but I need to cry and I need you to help me through one of the most difficult situations yeah. of my life. And yeah. That's how I found you and how you became part of my village, you know, whether you wanted it or not. When we went yeah. home from training, I, I stalked you, you know, I was going to find you, <laughs> but uh, you're going to find. You oh, wait, I remember. 
I remember you saying, I tried to find you on Facebook. I couldn't find you. I was like, well, I'm right here. And then you, you said something. Okay, I got you. You, you did. But yeah. that's okay. I'm glad you did because I was so, I was like, I, she's really cool. I really like her. And I was wondering, you know, how things were, because I think it was a couple of days after you left, after you went back to Washington. So for those who don't know, um, our training was here where I am in Cleveland. She had to come from Washington from where she is. To, she flew in um, to have a training with uh, our trainer at the time. And then I we was pretty much starting on the same day. And I lived in Cleveland, so I just came to the office to have the training with her. Uh, and then, you know, we met that way. Um, but I want to talk I want to talk about that. But I also want to talk about a little bit about, um, you know, we were trying to have like lunches and different stuff like that. And Christina would be hiding in the corner because she, she was had, she had had you know, her weight loss surgery, and she didn't know that I had had it. Now, like I said, by my weight, if you look at me, you can't tell that I've had it. But if you knew me before this, you know, 430 pounds, uh, more than 100 pound weight loss, you know that I've had uh, some kind of some kind of surgery, but she did not know. Um, and so I'm so glad that you did. You even, I think you even reached out via, you reached out via email. That's what it was. Um, and I'm so glad you did that because if you didn't, we wouldn't be doing this right now. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, a, a, you find people in all different ways. They'll present themselves in your life. And I hope that some of them are made in this group. I see a lot of connections being made and support each other. Don't you? Lean on each other, you know? And, I love it. You know, even if you have no one in your family, because, you know, what you're doing ultimately to them is you're flipping a mirror on them and you're making them look at themselves and say, yeah. you know what, I am yeah. 45 and have always wanted to do this surgery, but I'm scared of this and this. And maybe, you know, be of service in their life and maybe make them see, you know, just ask them what, you know, what is upsetting you about me having this procedure? You know, if it's your sister or your mom or your brother. And if they say, well, I'm scared that you're gonna die and that you say, well, I told you the mortality rate is only 1%. And if I'm not afraid, and I've just given yeah. you a reason not to be afraid, what is really the reason, you know? And if it's someone who's significantly the overweight, problem? nine times out of 10, it's probably gonna be because of their self-image. They're not hating on you, they're hating themselves and they're using you outwardly. And what they need to learn is that our success is no one else's failure. No one. Right, you right. Know? Just because, right. you know, we're moving in this part of our life, you know, at a, maybe a, a different pace than you are, you, you know, maybe in a different aspect of your life, very, very strong, you know, so mm -hmm. it's like, talk to these people. And if, if those relationships matter to you, you know, make it work. If these are people yeah. who mean nothing to <clears throat> you, and they're hating on you, then push it aside. But when it's someone like your spouse, yeah. I mean, that's very, very hard. Or if it's your mom or your sister, someone who you take their opinion really to heart, especially if you're going to go through with the procedure. Sometimes they can talk you out of it. Yeah. But if you're going to go through with it, when you're trying to heal that's up true. and feel better, you don't need naysayers, you know? So no, you don't. maybe remove yourself from those relationships for a little while until you can see more eye to eye, talk through it, try and get to you know, get to the bottom of it. But what we want to do is help you to be bulletproof, you know, and how do we, how do we test that something is bulletproof? We, you know, keep testing it over and over again, shoot it until it's indestructible. You know, like it says in the Bible, that which is yeah. indestructible is within us, you know? So, and even people who are not Christians just know that you, you're absolutely, you know, made of tough stuff. You just, those, ignorant statements from people those are the bullets they just keep shooting at you and what do you do you go back with a stronger formula so next time you have these statements and stats and facts to come back with or just statements of you know what i don't need that in my life if someone if a girlfriend comes out to you and says yeah. you're gonna look old just you don't even need to explain yourself mm, sweetheart yeah. just i do not need that in my life no thank you you know so we want to help yeah, you to yeah. be bulletproof but part of that is also getting back to ground zero. Work on that in some way. Um, these statements people make, they're yeah. gonna affect you forever if you put stake in what other people think. You know, you really, you need to get to your basic thinking patterns, your basic system of beliefs. 
you know, and a lot of that is, is childhood stuff, unfortunately, that we have to work through. But um, as far as getting, dealing with haters, you know, they're, like I said, they're not hating on you, they're hating themselves. And we're succeeding in their faces. And that's hard for a lot of people. I'm so glad that- And then you sometimes you have people- You did with your family. And that's, that's so- Yeah, know. yeah. And I, and I consider that a tremendous blessing. Because like I said, they all went, all of them, family and friends, even some people in my church, they went on the liquid diet with me. They went on the diet with me. And so I had a, you know, a community of people that were rooting me on. Um, but you know, one thing that I, I have noticed, um, and not necessarily with my weight loss journey that is still ongoing, um, is that you do have some people, because I have friends, like I've had a friend, you have, you, you know, the, the signs are there. So I had a friend, um, they put up these condos, very, very nice condos, and they were, I mean, they were absolutely beautiful, uh, super expensive, they were, you know, running around $200,000, just, I didn't know that at the time, I just saw uh, the condo, I just thought it was really nice, you know, they'd done a new building, and I, I was in the car with my friend, and I said, well, I'd really like to live there one day, and she cut her, now this girl, she has, uh, she's got money and she does whatever she has money. She says, um, Oh, you'll never be able to live there. And what? And, you know, just for the sheer, just things, little jabs, little digs, uh, little converse, little comments like that. If you have people that you say, I want to lose weight and they say, Oh, I heard those people gain their weight back or mm, you might die on the table, stuff like that. Cut that stuff off immediately. Cut it off. It's time to cut off the friendship, cut it off because it's toxic. And the only thing that you need to do is focus on your healing and your new way of life. And that's why I posted in the group, you know, something about a weight loss related anxiety uh, and depression. You know, one way to battle that is to give yourself positive affirmations every day. Um, you know, speak, I am beautiful. I am strong. I can do this. I have this. Because if you don't have the village around you, the only village that you have is you. You know, I'm grateful for the people who did decide, you know, we're almost at 700 members right now, which I think is tremendous. I think it's absolutely, we had a, a phenomenal rate of growth and we haven't even had the group for three weeks. I mean, we're, we're heading into our third week and we've just had a phenomenal rate of growth, but I've seen rate of growth and I've seen so many people say, I'm so grateful for this group. You know, I needed a place to vent. I needed a place to talk. Yeah. You know, we have a zero tolerance, uh, zero tolerance for harassment and stuff like that. So this is a community that you can join um, if you're considering weight loss surgery or if you have had weight loss surgery or if you're going to have it, you know, it's, it's just something that, that, that I think is really imperative for people who do not have uh, support. So again, if you witness people who give you those little jabs, like you're not going to make it, or, you know, uh, well, how come you can't, how come you can't just lose it on your, or you're lazy? Yeah. Let me, let me, you need to let me, guard let's, let me, your mind. <laughs> guard the door of your mind. Lazy? As, as fiercely as you do uh, your house. You know, how, ma and your ears. how many of us you have intricate lock systems on our homes, yet we let a statement from yeah. someone in our brain and let it wreak havoc. You know, we really... And, and then it continues and you play over and over and over and over again. You have got to stop that cycle. And you have to stop those individuals that don't have a problem with telling you that they think you're going to die on the table or they don't think that you're going to be successful or that you're taking the easy way out. Get rid of those people. And if they're a mother or a sister or something like that, like Christina said, you know, maybe pause it for a little bit. You take, do what you have to do. Take your hiatus, take your break, go do what you need to do. Let yourself heal. You know, you join the community or if you need to join a community of individuals like us um, who are supportive to you and can empathize with your situation. Yeah. And we're here for you. So we will link the uh, group below. We will link the products that I used. I'm gonna put the products that I showed in the video and where to buy them. Um, and we're gonna keep going with this, you know, this series that we're doing, getting you to ground zero. We're gonna, you know, give you support yeah. and making you bulletproof. Um, and then we're just gonna watch everyone succeed with flying colors. So um, a fun fact, parents, uh, parrots talk and can't fly but eagles are silent most mm -hmm. of their lives and conquer the sky. So leave those parrots, let them chirp nice. on the ground and take off. So that's what I want to leave you awesome. guys. Awesome. Awesome. We have a question from Victoria. Victoria, yes, I will send you, I'll send you an invite. So uh, don't worry about that. I'll send you an invite. Um, but yeah, the, the group is generally for people who have had weight loss surgery or who are thinking about 
um, having weight loss surgery. Uh, we do have a few people in there that are struggling to lose weight, uh, but we talk about everything. It's, the group is called Weight Loss Surgery Support Uncensored. We talk about everything. We talk about, uh, you know, sagging skin. We talk about, you know, people losing your hair. We talk about things to help with, uh, with weight loss. Um, people discuss what they're eating. You know, you have different variations because I know that most of the time when you talk about weight loss surgery, like Christina and I, we have two different diets. We had uh, both had weight loss surgery. We had to do two different diets. She's, she's a vegetarian vegan and I'm trying to get there, but I had to do mostly high protein. Um, so there's different things that you can talk about as far as diets are concerned after the surgery or leading up to the surgery if you choose to do it. But we talk about everything. Uh, we'll, we talk about, we're going to talk about undergarments, like support holes. We talk, the, the one post that you see, <laughs> the girl asked about uh, what your breasts look like now. And someone said it looks like two fried eggs uh, taped to the wall. That cracked me up. So, you know, because your breasts deflate after you've lost 100 pounds or, you know, whatever. You've got to, sometimes you may have to get reconstructive surgery. So while the group is not for everyone, um, there are specific well, groups in for Victoria. specific individuals that we are targeting. Yeah, but Victoria, she's a good friend. I, I know her very well. She's, she's okay. Um, but that, that two flat X uh, <laughs> nailed to the wall, oh my God, I, it, I, it was hilarious. It was hilarious. But um, I think, you know, we've got a really good community going. Um, very supportive. People support each other. Like I said, zero harassment policy. Christina's a moderator. I'm a moderator. Uh, we're both admins. We try to take care of, make sure that everybody gets their questions answered, if we can answer them. Um, if not, somebody in the group will definitely answer them for you. Uh, and I think I love your brainchild, what you just said about a series about being bulletproof. That is absolutely perfect. Um, because people do struggle. They struggle so much. If you saw some of the comments from my post about the weight, weight loss related anxiety, you know, those individuals on there, I, I spent a, probably a good hour and a half last night just counseling people and talking about uh, being supported and talking about what you need to do uh, to, to kind of, you know, reconcile those feelings with yourself. Um, so I think that that was excellent what you just said. We're doing a series on being bulletproof. That's perfect. That's perfect. So I can't wait to see what we come up with. Sorry, needed to get to the charger. Yeah, it's um, gonna oh, be. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you. Okay. Um, it's gonna be exciting, and I'm looking forward to just helping everyone because you know there is no lost cause. Yeah. So send us any questions or messages. No. Um, you have comments, critiques. Yeah. Um, we just don't want to know who you're voting for. <laughs> <laughs> no politics. No politics. No, no politics. Oh my God. Because it turns into such a nasty discussion. No politics. No, 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 no politics. No politics. But until next nope, Sunday. No politics. We are logging off. Hope you got some insight from this video and have a good night. Bye. Have a good night.